Hey, so I thought today I'm gonna show you how to make a particle system driven by vector fields. We need a simple rendering network. Add an add sub, enable add points, append it with a convert sub and set it to particles per point. Add a geometry comb, a camera, a constant mat, apply it to the gel and a render top. We're gonna need a grid. Let's use a GLSL top. That's the easiest thing, I'm sure most of you already know it. Copy the vv.st and paste it here. Also set the blue channel to zero. We're just gonna use the internal UV texture variable that's provided by Touch Designer. Make it a 32-bit float. We're gonna need some negative values. Add a math top. You, you see these values go from 0 to 1 on both axes. And I want to make them go from minus 1 to 1, so I'm just gonna quickly change the range here in the math top. The next thing we need is a null. Let's move it just a bit to the side and rename it to something like any pose for the initial position. Connect it to feedback, then to another null and drag that null onto the feedback. Let's enable instancing, use this null as a translate operator and set the channels to R, G and B. That's a little bit too dense, so let's quickly change the rest to 100 by 100 for now. Oh, and we need a keyboard and chop, make it reset the feedback. Now comes the juicy part. Add a GLSL top, let's write some code. Rename the variable to pose, remove this line and make sure you're outputting pose, not color. Now, if we reset the feedback, we're gonna see our grid again. Connect the initial position to the second input of the GLSL top. We're gonna use it to reset particles based on some conditions. Go back to our code, duplicate this line, rename the variable to pose any and don't forget to change the input index. In a couple of previous tutorials, uh, we used some abstract force for every particle, but now I just want to make sure that each particle gets the velocity applied based on where it is in our space. Let's go with a simple noise, as we usually do. Connect it to the third input of the GLSL and insert a slope top after the noise. Set the green channel to vertical luminance and the blue channel to zero. Let's dive back to our code. Add another variable, call it val, copy and paste the input statement and change the input index to 2. I'm gonna add a variable called step, which is 1 divided by 60, because our FPS is 60, but honestly, that can be any number, this is just one that works for me. And now, on every frame, we're gonna add some velocity multiplied by step to the pose. We also need a variable called life. Let's use our pose alpha channel. And I'm gonna subtract the step from life on each frame. And then check, and if life goes below zero, we just need to reset the pose to pose any and life to pose any dot a. Finally, instead of pose, we're gonna output a vec4 which consists of pose xyz values and life. We need to use the particles position instead of uv to sample from the velocity field. Uh, we know that our particles can be anywhere on the grid that goes from minus 1 to 1 and so if we just used our pose.xy for position, it's not gonna work because because UV values have to be from 0 to 1. You can quickly remap those values to that range, just divide them by 2 and add a 0.5. Now let's set the noise to be a 32-bit float, move the 0 point slider on the slope top to 0. Yeah, every particle gets its velocity based on where it is in our space. But we still have to fix a minor error I've made. Life should be minus equals step, yeah. Now let's randomize the lifespan. Add a reorder top. Connect the map top into noise, set the output to be just noise, and then connect it to the reorder top. 
Here, the offset will represent our particle's lifespan and the amplitude is lifespan variance. Set the offset to 2 and let's keep the amplitude at 0.5. Now, set the alpha channel here to red of the second input and it works. You can go and increase the resolution if you want more density. Now, if you remember, some time ago I've made a tutorial about curl vector fields. And the cool thing is that you can apply the same curl technique to make our particles move. Just turn off the limit and set the output to red and green channels instead of red and blue. If you don't want to see these particles piling up at the border, you can just check the X and Y position values and if anything goes out of range, just reset the pose. Also, because we work with only two dimensions, we don't need any perspective in our camera. And if you make a render top to be a square and set the ortho width to 2, all particles will fit right into it. And another thing which is more important, because we are working with only two dimensions here, you can do whatever you want with that velocity field using just 2D tops. You can mix two vector fields with a crosstop or use a movie file in and the main top to combine two vector fields based on an image or your camera threshold. You can connect an animated ramp into the main input and make it interpolate between two vector fields as it goes. And think about it, all that works with just that much of GLSL, I mean, I mean it's crazy. Yeah, so I hope you liked this little tutorial, if you did, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, support me on Patreon, follow me on Instagram, or don't. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.